uh, all if the universe didn't have me, if, uh, if I'm a cosmic accident and the universe is going ultimately nowhere. Um, do I have a basis to call anything beautiful? Do I have a basis even to ask the question? Like, you know, for example, right now we're having a dialogue. What are we assuming right now? We're assuming induction. We're assuming laws of logic. To assume induction, you would have to actively say, this is going to be your But I mean, we don't necessarily know the future is going to be the, pre uh, the same as the past. You don't. No, nobody does. I well, no, I, I would say Christians, Christians have a certain claim that yeah, we do yeah, know of the future. Yeah, well, every position is a faith position. For example, in your position just now, when you say we don't know, but we're pretty sure, that's a faith commitment. But I would say it's blind faith. Uh, whereas mine's a faith commitment to be sure, but it's a faith commitment in a God who's revealed himself in history. And so I have certain knowledge of God. So they keep saying, both are faith, faith positions. But one is a blind faith commitment, and one is a faith in evidence, and the testimony of the ultimate standard and ultimate authority of God. Uh, you also said laws of logic are universal. Yeah. And that is part of God. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so we're told these laws of logic are the same everywhere. Laws of logic are universal. Yes. How do we know that? Other than God. Well, in fact, well, I would say we have certainty that our thoughts are to be rational, consistent, that there is unchanging nature to laws of logic. We actually have certainty about that because God's revealed himself to us. But I would say if we contrast it, I would say an unbelieving worldview, an atheistic worldview, we don't have any basis to depend upon them at all. So for example, um, if you were to say to me just now, without God, okay, so yeah, just start without him, say we're not gonna begin our thinking with him, we're gonna deny him. If you were to say, well, Jeff, laws of logic um, aren't universal. And then I said to you, okay, so they all. And you said, no, 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 they're not. And I said, okay, so they all. You see, I would be contradicting you right there, and you wouldn't be comfortable with it. Why? Because you would be depending upon the universal nature. Of but the universal no, no, no. applies everywhere. That's right. Our experience only covers here. How can we say that it would be the same in other places? So you, so you understand when we're talking about laws of logic, we're talking about, say, basic things like law of non-contradiction. Okay? So are you saying the law of non-contradiction doesn't apply in Iceland? You're saying we don't know it applies on Mars or Jupiter. Well, again, the law of non-contradiction um, is, is something that is different than, say, a natural law like a physical constant. A law of non-contradiction is immaterial and that it is, it is conceptual in nature. Okay. Well, just that it's conceptual, it's, yeah. that's that non-existent. And, no, in the sense, well, if it doesn't exist, it doesn't. I can, it, so it doesn't exist. No. And so it does. So it does. But it we, doesn't. We couldn't know that without going to other places. We could know. But we'd have to go and learn. Yeah. We wouldn't have to go and learn. <laughs> okay. So then so we don't have to go and learn. So we do. Do you see, do you see what happens? If, if we don't assume the universal nature of laws of logic, and you want to deny them, then I would sit and contradict you the whole time, and I, I guarantee you in about 60 seconds you'd probably get pretty frustrated. But that doesn't get anywhere. It doesn't, exactly right, because laws of logic are universal. It's the atmosphere we all live in. This is God's world, and so it's unavoidable. We can try to deny the laws of logic as universal and unchanging, yeah. but we can't live that way. Yeah. So what about somebody who's never heard of God or the yeah. theistic idea of Jesus and Trinity? I mean, they can still know an apple isn't an orange. You know what I mean? They still have the yes. basic knowledge. Yeah, so the, yeah, and I think it is important point. There's it, only so much you can do in 45 minutes. If you um, if you if you would, if we had two hours to go, I'd probably explain something really important, and that is that. The Christian claim is not that atheists don't use laws of logic. The Christian claim is not that atheists don't appeal to universal laws of arithmetic. The Christian claim is that apart from God, you can't justify any of those things. And so, for example, we say somebody in Papua New Guinea has never heard of Jesus is still doing what? Appealing to universal laws of logic, still appealing to the law of non-contradiction, and still telling their kids not to steal from others, those kind of things. We would say that's because they're made the image of God, and it's inescapable. Uh, but what we're saying is ultimately that without God, you would have no certainty for the knowledge claims you make, to the appeals to laws of logic, to the appeals to induction, the appeals to ethical absolutes. You would have no certainty, is what we're, is what we're saying. Is that a problem? Is what? No certainty of problem. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say philosophically speaking, it's a tremendous problem. It's a tremendous problem. So a Christian would want to have an objective basis 
to call something evil or to say, for example, we can do science. This is really important. In fact, we can even do science. We would want to have a, a reason a reason response, a cogent answer as to how we do science. We wouldn't want to say we want to live by just simple blind faith. See what I'm saying? The Christian faith is a position that's rooted in a foundation of objectivity and certainty. Whereas without God, you don't have any certainty that tomorrow is going to be like today. You don't have any certainty that this action is, is truly not good and this action is good. Um, I just perfect example is when I had Dan Barker on the radio show, and he was brought up the issue of rape. Okay? If I ask you, you and you, is rape wrong? We're all going to say what right now? Yes, right? So here, Dan yeah, Barker is saying, well, rape is wrong, we shouldn't do it. And I said, but in your worldview, you don't have any certainty that rape actually is wrong, do you? So I said, if we're all just stardust, what's the problem with stardust banging into stardust? And he said, well, ultimately nothing. So in that case, Dan Barker, as an atheist, has an arbitrary decision as to what is good or not good. It's totally arbitrary, which means he has no objective basis to call any action evil. Is that a problem? It's a real problem. Well, do you, well, I would I would venture to say I'll bet that in practical experience, if, if someone were to go to your car right now, you drive. Okay, someone go to your car right now and you watch them punch in your window, open your door, grab your car stereo out. I'm willing to bet you'd either call the police or try and stop them. So you would live as though stealing is actually wrong. I would live as though stealing for me. Is wrong. If he stole from your car and I saw it, I wouldn't necessarily. But watch this. But watch this. Um, in his mind, at that moment, his own subjective thought process is that that car stereo is not yours. It's his. Okay. That you would have an objective basis in which to disagree. Would you not? I bought the car for you. Yeah. But so he says, "What does it matter to you about the car?" He says, "It doesn't matter that you think it's yours. It's mine now." It doesn't matter, I can take it from him and say, now it's mine. Right, but you see what you're, like, you're lost in there? You just, because you don't start with God, abandon all ability to complain and have any moral indignance at all. Because now, now, now you're having a debate with the thief about whether or not thieving is a good thing to do. Whereas as a, as a Christian, as a Christian, I can say, there's an objective basis. It's not just my opinion. Stealing violates the very character of God. Stealing is immoral objectively. It's not a debate. I have an objective basis. Whereas, the, say, the, the atheist or naturalist materialist would just have sort of, well, he thinks so, I happen to not to, but we can have a little debate. And, uh, we can have, see what I'm saying? It, if we lived in a world where everybody stole all the time, is that bad? If everybody's stealing from everybody in the world. Yeah, well, we do live in a world where people steal from each other all the time. We have places that we put them. No, I mean, everybody. As in, you steal from Valley, Valley stealing from you. There is not one person who doesn't steal. In that world, is it still bad to steal? Okay, well, we don't live in that world, and if we did, and it was created by God, I would say the absolute standard to which to appeal to would be God's own character. Love does no harm to its neighbor. God is love. And so if I were to say to you, I'm not going to steal from you. Why? Because you're an image bearer of God, so am I. God is love. Love does no harm to its neighbor. God has told us with certainty, you shall not steal. I have an absolute basis for stealing as immoral and to condemn it and to punish it for justice. But if you abandon God, you have no basis to call anything wrong and you have no basis for justice. All you have is star stuff on the cosmos in a universe that doesn't care. All we have is sky above us. So the rapist, the child molester, the thief, and the murderer have just as much a valid opinion as anybody else about their activities because they have no certainty, no basis for what is good or what is evil without God.